What's up guys, so this is a type of stored DOM-based cross-site scripting. Note that we sometimes think of there being three different types of cross-site scripting attack. We have stored cross-site scripting, reflected cross-site scripting, and DOM-based cross-site scripting. But these three types of cross-site scripting are not always mutually exclusive. So this is a stored, but also DOM-based type of cross-site scripting attack. It means the attack's stored in a database somewhere, but the result of that database information being retrieved is a subsequent DOM manipulation, which then generates the possibility for a cross-site scripting attack. We'll see how it works in this lab. So we're at the comments section on a blog post, and one thing that just popped up straight away when opening the DevTools was this JavaScript file. And the name of the JavaScript file is load comments with vulnerable escape HTML. So the amusing part of this lab is the JavaScript file is actually named after the type of vulnerability, which is presumably not something that you're going to find in the wild, but it gives us an immediate clue of where we're looking. We know there's something regarding the escaping of HTML, which is going to create a possible vulnerability. So let's fire up that JavaScript file. And what we're looking for is a function that attempts to escape HTML because according to the title of the JavaScript file, it's going to be vulnerable. And we notice the function here, function escape HTML. It takes some HTML code as an argument. And the objective of this JavaScript function is to replace the left and right angle brackets. So obviously if we use those angle brackets directly, it could result in HTML injection. So the idea is to replace the angle brackets with their HTML encoded form. So instead of the left angle bracket, we have ampersand LT, and instead of the right angle bracket, we have ampersand GT. Now it might not immediately be clear why this is vulnerable JavaScript, although it is vulnerable and you'll know this if you understand how the replace method works in JavaScript, you know this is not the right way of escaping HTML special characters. Having said that, let's assume that we don't know why this is vulnerable at this stage. We know it is vulnerable based on the title in the JavaScript file. So a good idea is just to start trying to inject HTML and seeing how it's handled. So we might start with a very simple h1 tag and hello world in the comments. And we'll just fill out the other information and it's required in this case because there's some JavaScript verification. So if we don't fill this out, we won't be able to submit the form. Okay, let's post the comment and let's check out how the comment is rendered to the page. So we scroll down, we see our new comment and we see H1 rendered to the page. Now, what this means is that this H1 has been successfully escaped. It's been successfully replaced with the HTML encoded version of a left bracket. If it wasn't, we wouldn't see the left and right brackets because they would be passed as HTML. But the interesting thing is we don't see the closing H1 tag. And the logical assumption is that for whatever reason, that closing H1 tag has not been HTML encoded. In other words, it's being rendered to the page. In fact, it's being rendered to the DOM in this case. And the reason why we say it's rendered to the DOM is that it's not part of the original HTML that's delivered when we make a HTTP request to this page. So the idea is the page is loaded. We then have an asynchronous HTTP request, which retrieves comments stored in the database. It then renders those comments to the DOM. We'll have a look at that a little bit later. Let's see if we can generate an exploit. We're just trying to inject HTML tags at this stage working with our theory that only the first set of angle brackets is actually HTML encoded, we'll just make use of two H1s. So that first H1 with its two angle brackets, we're assuming will be HTML encoded. So let's add a second H1. Let's type hello world. Then let's close our H1 tags. Once again, we need to fill out the rest of the form just for JavaScript verification. Let's post that. Let's go back to the blog. Let's see our comment. And you can see we actually have hello world in bold purple font. So it means those H1 tags were not correctly HTML encoded. Obviously only the first set of angle brackets were HTML encoded. 
and we've now injected HTML. Now I actually managed to solve the lab without triggering the flag because I usually run these labs before I know the solution. Of course, I know the solution by the time I make the video, but I like to try and figure out the solution without looking at the solution first. So here's what I did, H1, and I used on mouse over. Now you'll see that the lab's solution is actually superior here, and we'll explain why. So I put on mouse over equals alert, then I typed hello world, and then I ended the H1 tag. So again, let's fill out the extra information. Let's post the comment. So you can see we don't get any flag at this stage, but we do actually have a successful DOM-based stored cross-site scripting attack because if I hover my cursor over hello world, we get the alert popped up to the page. So in some senses, this should actually trigger the flag, but it is an inferior solution to the one in the Burp Academy solution. And that's because even if a user visits this link, they still have to move their cursor to a specific location on the page to pop up the cross-site scripting attack. It's much better if that cross-site scripting attack launches immediately on a user clicking on a certain link. So the way we can do that is, once again, we just have an arbitrary left and right angle brackets. We don't even need to put H1 inside them. We could just use a left and right bracket. We then have an image tag, source equals zero. So we know this is going to error out. Then we can add an on error attribute and we can pop up an alert function when this image request errors out. Once again, just fill in the arbitrary information here, post the comment back to the blog. This time we should get our flag popped up to the page. Congratulations, you solved the lab. So there's a couple of reasons why this vulnerability exists. One is to do with the misuse of the dot replace method. Notice this line here. If the pattern is a string, only the first occurrence will be replaced. So the idea is we provide a pattern to the replace method, and then we provide a string to replace that matched pattern. But we can also use a regular expression instead of a string. So if we want to replace all the matches in a string, we need to make use of a regular expression with a specific flag. This is the only way of replacing everything. And we've kind of figured that out just by looking at the lab. We we're able to deduce immediately, probably even before we look at the JavaScript code, that only the first set of angle brackets is being HTML encoded, the rest are not. And it's because of the way this replace method was used. Now there are ways to safely HTML encode special characters on the front end using JavaScript. Having said that, it shouldn't really be necessary. It can sometimes be used as an extra security layer, but there should be a way to have this page working safely without any JavaScript escaping on the front end. And it's to do with the way that these comments are stored in the database. Remember that we said that these comments were retrieved with an asynchronous HTTP request. We can see that request here. So this is a request and here is the response. So in response to the HTTP request, presumably some sort of database query is run on the back end, and this JSON object is returned. Take a look at how the comments have been stored in the database. They've been stored with the HTML special characters intact. So what's happening here is something unsafe is being stored in the database then we are relying on the JavaScript to make that code safe for consumption when it's rendered to the DOM. That's already ideally too late in the chain. So the way this should work is we submit our comment. On the server, the special characters are stripped from the comment string that we provided. So this shouldn't be stored as left angle bracket H1 right angle bracket. It should be stored with the HTML encoding. So there's nothing to be done on the front end. We can simply retrieve these comments from the database. We can then render them directly to the DOM. If we do have any escaping going on on the front end with the JavaScript, it's purely for extra defense an extra layer of security. But in most cases, the correct thing to do is to handle this when it's first submitted by the user, then it can be stored safely in the database, 
then it can be retrieved from the database without any need for any sort of front end escaping. So you can really see there's more than one type of vulnerability here. Yes, dot replace was used incorrectly because it was only HTML encoding the first set of angle brackets. But even if it was working, it's too late in the security sequence. Ideally, that user input is made safe before it's even saved into the database. And that front end escaping is no longer necessary when those comments are retrieved from the database. Now, as a final pointer, why is this a DOM based stored cross site scripting attack? Well, hopefully we can see that these comments are stored in a database somewhere. So every time we refresh the page, the same cross site scripting alerts going to pop up. So we understand very easily why it's a stored cross site scripting attack. Well, why is it DOM based? Well, we send this asynchronous HTTP request to the server. We receive the comments as a JSON object in response. Then JavaScript is used to render those comments to the DOM. So keep in mind, this is different from the original HTML we get back from the server with our initial HTTP request. So if we go to view page source here, notice there are no comments here in the HTML source. It's because those comments are added to the page afterwards by the JavaScript. If instead those comments were part of the initial raw HTML that's returned from the server and the comments are not placed there by JavaScript, well, now it's not a DOM based cross site scripting attack. It's simply just a stored cross site scripting attack. But in this case, those comments are placed there. They're rendered to the DOM by JavaScript. So this is both a stored cross site scripting attack and a DOM based cross site scripting attack. All right, hopefully that made sense and you understand what a stored DOM-based cross-site scripting attack is. Thanks very much for watching, guys.